Hey everyone, it's Jacob again. Uh, today's video is about what I'm calling noun phrases. And this is the first video that I'm making that really um, talks about building simple sentences in Psalm 1. And these are going to be sentences that are really basically all about nouns. It's really comparing nouns together. So to build that up, we'll be talking about what's called articles. And if that's not something familiar to you, that's really in English the equivalent of the or at or an. Those little words that come right before nouns that tell us a little bit about the noun. We'll be talking about something called a particle O, and then we'll be combining those all together to create sentences. And again, the objective of all these videos is to give you the grammar and the sentence structure to start building sentences on your own. Start, you know, plugging in vocab that you either find from here or find from some of the uh, the links that I've got below to some English dictionaries or to Google Translate or to, um, you know, I've got another website that's down there that might have some things. But the idea is like build the vocabulary that's useful to you and this is the grammar and sentence structure so you can string those together and start to communicate with either your friends or family or when you travel that kind of thing um, so again kind of first off going over Psalm 1 articles um, it's a it's a little different than um, English in the sense that for example the word the in English it absolutely tells us that the noun that we're about to describe is something definite, meaning we know we know what it is. We, we In our minds, we can picture the specific thing. Like if we say the cup, I, I'm not talking about just any cup. I'm talking about, you know, a cup that's right here or I'm talking about, you know, my cup or it, it's very definite. If I say something like a cup, I could be talking about one of any cups that are, say, in the cupboard or wherever. So that's kind of what articles do for us in English. In Psalm 1, they do that as well, but they also tell us whether or not the noun is plural or singular. So, um, it, whereas in English, in order to kind of figure out whether they're, we're talking about one thing or many things, we add an S to the end of that noun. So in Psalm 1, we, we don't really ever change the noun. The noun stays the same no matter what. We change the article in order to be able to distinguish whether there is one of them or many of them. Hopefully that's not too complicated. I'll try and kind of go through it. Again, these slides, I've got a link below. So you, if this is a helpful table, you can download it and print it out. Um, but basically kind of going through on the left-hand side, um, the Psalm 1 uh, of what's going on. But first of all, definite versus indefinite. Um, and then within those two categories, distinguishing between singular and plural. So in the definite band there, um, for singular it's le. And this is the equivalent of the English the. So the example I've got is le maile. Maile is the, is the noun or the Psalm 1 word for dog. When I say le maile, I know that it is one dog, and I know that it's a very specific dog that I'm talking about. Maybe it's my dog, or maybe it's that dog that I'm looking straight at. That's when you would say le maile. Um, going you know, below that, where I'm still being deaf and I know exactly the thing I'm talking about, but it's multiple things. It's 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 a plural version of that noun. So in English, we'd still probably use the for this. We would probably say, you know, the dogs, and we would just put S at the end of dog to indicate that it's plural. In Psalm 1, you actually don't use an article at all. You just kind of keep it blank in front of that noun, and that tells you that there's multiple of them. So in this case, I'm using se'evai. Se'evai is the Psalm 1 word for shoe. Because I don't have a le in front of it, um, I know that it's shoes. Um, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll use examples and sentences, but um, in the following slides. Um, in that indefinite band, again, indefinite just means I don't have a specific thing in mind. Um, so, for example, um, a or an in English. If I say, give me a cup, it, again, it could be any cup in the cupboard. If I say, hey, can you hand me a phone? I don't care whose phone you hand me. I just need a phone. Uh, so that's the, really what we're talking about when we say indefinite. So in Psalm 1, when you're talking about singular indefinite nouns, um, you use the word se. So in this particular example, it would be se tu si. Um, and for plural, you use the, the article ni. So you, again, all these articles go right in front of the noun. So in the example I've got here, it kind of translates to some in English. The example I've got here is uh, ni ta'avale. Ta'avale means car in Psalm 1. When I say ni ta'avale, it means some cars. Again, it tells me indefinite versus definite, and it tells me how many of the things I'm talking about, one or is it many. 
Um, so again, we'll use more examples later, but that's kind of a quick introduction. Um, the particle O is is pretty unique to Samoan. I, I can't think of a real proper um, English equivalent, um, but I think loosely it, it can be translated as the phrase, it is. And basically all this means is that if you're using a noun in Samoan and you're not putting it in a sentence with like a, like a real verb, like the car goes to the store or, you know, the cat is sitting, you know, where sitting is like the, the verb. Um, if you're just having that noun hang out all by itself, you've got to use the particle O in, in front of it. Um, it's kind of a weird rule. And it's, like I said, it's, there's no real great translation, but that, that's how it goes. You, you basically are kind of using that to introduce these lone nouns that are just kind of hanging out. So I've got some examples. Um, some of them are kind of random, like all my examples. But um, starting from the top there, that list, on a computer. Um, computer means computer. I mean, to be honest, I don't know exactly if that's how it's spelled, but that's kind of how it sounds. Um, but you wouldn't, if, you, if all you were saying is the computer, you, you really wouldn't say le computer. I mean, you might just in like a, a quick answer to someone's question, but, but properly you put O in front of it. And I think you hear that actually in spoken someone most of the time is you put O in front of these lone nouns. Um, or pusa isa, pusa isa. Um, this just means the ice box or the refrigerator. Ole pusa isa, ole. Um, and again, here we're, we're using O plus an article plus the noun. That's kind of the sentence structure we're going at. Um, next one down, O se telefoni. O se telefoni. This just means a telephone. But again, it's O plus the article plus the noun is sort of the, the complete noun um, sort of phrase or package. Uh, o se fale. O se fale. Fale is, is a house. So this... Um, I loosely I call this one a sentence, but this just means a house. Oni penitala, oni penitala. This just means some pencils. O tupe, uh, tupe means money in Samoan, so o tupe is just, it's money. Uh, o tangata, tangata means people or person. Again, the noun in and of itself doesn't tell us if it's plural or singular. Um, it's the article that does that. And here we don't have an article, so this means it's, it's plural. So it translates to people in, in English rather than person. O tangata. If I said o le tangata, it means the person. If I said o se tangata, it means um, a person. And if I say o tangata, I mean the people, if that makes sense. So with that background, and hopefully that made sense, but definitely let me know in the comments or, or um, you know, if you have further questions. But basically with that introduction, when we've got the particle O and we've got articles and we've got some nouns, we can actually put all that together to create um, some pretty simple sentences. Um, and again, the sentence structure that I'm introducing, I'm, I've tried to outline it below there in the second bullet. It's, it's O plus noun. And when I say noun, it means article plus the noun. Um, and then do the second sort of noun phrase, O plus noun. Um, so for example, when I say ole salama o se mea fainga it means the hammer is a tool. So in Samoan, salama is hammer and mea fainga lawenga is, is tool. I mean, it literally translates to thing you do work with. Um, but ole salama o se mea fainga lawenga, that's a complete sentence in Samoan and it's a complete sentence in English. Um, and really we're just doing a smashing two noun phrases together. Um, so the second one below, ole fifine o se faya unga. Ole fifine o se faya unga. This means the woman is a teacher. Fifine is woman. Faya unga means teacher. Literally translates to doer of school. Um, Ouru o ni la au sa amoa. Um, Ouru o ni la au sa amoa. This translates to breadfruit trees are... Samoan trees. I was stretching a little bit with this sentence because I couldn't think of a good example, but ulu is, is it means breadfruit. It, it also could mean breadfruit tree. And then laau is tree and Samoa obviously is Samoan. So 
Um, this translates to breadfruit trees or samoan trees. Uh, this means the thing there is a table. Uh, so again, in Samoan, mea is thing and lao lao is table. Um, the word lea, don't worry about it too much right now, but we would call that a demonstrative. It kind of just, it's like a there, this, that kind of word. Um, so, ore mea lea, o se lao lao. Um, the last one is oau o se paalangi. Oau o se paalangi. Uh, this is applicable to me because I'm paalangi. Um, and really, Balangi is the Samoan word for like someone of European descent or, you know, kind of a, a white guy. Um, and au is, is a pronoun for I. So, o au o se Balangi. I am a Balangi. Um, so again, hopefully that makes sense. But really what this does, it starts, it, it, it's the first video that we've done where we've opened up the ability to make full sentences in Samoan. And all you can, and you can swap in any nouns that you want into any of these things. Like you don't have to say ore salamo si me fanga wenga. You can say, I'm trying to think of another tool. You know, say ore ore tui o si me fanga wenga. The fork is a is a is a tool. Ore naifi o si me fanga wenga. Something like that. Um, and again, I've got a vocab list below where I'll demonstrate it. But hopefully this was helpful, just in terms of that really basic sentence structure and again it starts laying the foundation and we'll layer things on top of this to do you know more complicated sentences you know those kinds of things but this is the simplest sentence structure at least in my opinion in Psalm 1 and it's the easiest to sort of get a hold of because you can sort of pick out nouns pretty quickly either by just talking with friends or again looking it up and then suddenly you can actually start um, you know speaking Psalm 1 in sentences and, you know, if people ask you, hey, what is that thing? You've got a sentence structure to kind of answer that. You could say that thing is a, uh, whatever it is, a table. Um, so some of the vocab I put together, these are always random. And again, I, I know that part of this is going to be blocked out. But again, you can download the slides without my video in it uh, below. Um, but I'll just kind of go through it. I'll try and demo the pronunciation. Um, so I'll start with the left going down. So, Faitatoa. Faitatoa means door. Maile, I think I mentioned that above. Maile is dog in Samoan. Pussy. Pussy is a cat in Samoan. Moa. Moa is a chicken in Samoan. Pua. Pua is a pig. Bovi. Bovi is a cow. You can kind of tell some of these uh, are related to the English words like Bovi is kind of like bovine. Because again, cows were not, you know, native to Samoa prior to European contact. Uh, manu, manu is a general word for animal or creature, so that can be handy if you just don't know the name of it. You can just say manu. Uh, manulele, manulele is a general word for bird, and again, you can see the word animal in there. It literally translates to flying animal, so that's pretty easy. Uh, monga monga, uh, monga monga means cockroach. Um, you'll see those. Uh, loi. Loi is an ant in Samoan. Uh, second column, ulu is your head. I mean, it could also be a breadfruit, uh, which we talked about earlier. Um, but I thought I'd do body parts because I hadn't done that before and it's a bunch of nouns that you, know, you might end up using. Uh, mata. Mata is eyes or eye, depending on what article you put in front of it. Mutu. Mutu is your mouth. Uh, Dalinga. Dalinga is your ears. Isu is your nose. Um, Ua is your neck. Uh, Lima is your hand or your arm. Vai is your leg or your foot. Tino, tino is your body. And Tauau are your shoulders. Uh, finally, in the third column, Vai. Vai is a general word for water, so this could be water you drink, it could be, you know, water in the river, that kind of thing. Uh, rapisi, or probably more commonly spoken, is going to be lapisi, is trash or rubbish. It's a, it's a translation of the word rubbish, rapisi, rubbish. Uh, ipu is a general word for dish or cup, ipu. Tui, I mentioned before, is fork. 
Tui, spoony, his spoon. Sounds pretty straightforward. Spoony, spoon. Uh, knifey, another pretty easy one. Knifey is knife. Um, Fa'malama. Fa'malama is window. And again, one of my previous videos, we talked about the verb malamalama. It, it, one, of the, one of the meanings is light. So this is a fa'amalama. This is something that makes light. So that's what a window is. Um, awala. Awala is a road. Uh, wati is a watch. Wati, so that one's kind of easy. And then ofu is, ofu is a general word for clothes. Um, technically, lava lava is also like a, a general word for clothes. I think ofu is more common, at least when you're just talking about clothes in general. Um, so again, hopefully this is helpful. Um, hopefully people are watching this. Uh, if you have questions, I will read the comments and I will try and, and respond. So um, you know, let me know what you think. If you, this is something you like, hit the thumbs up or subscribe. Uh, let me know if this is worth uh, keeping up. Thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Bye.